All right, so right now I'm going to go through a resource leveling question. I'm going to take my activities, uh, duration of resources right here, make it into a CP diagram, as you can see right here. And then I'm going to show you how to convert that into a bar chart and use the bar chart to resource level your uh, resources. So first off, we have all of our activities and what they are preceded immediately by, the duration and the resources. I went ahead and made this CPM diagram right here uh, to save some time on this video. Um, you can see that A and B are two projects that start because neither of them are preceded immediately by anything. And both of those arrows go to C because C is preceded immediately by A and B. Um, and then D and E are both preceded immediately by C, so that's why an arrow goes from C to both of those. And you can follow that logic to uh, make the rest of this CPM diagram. So I'm going to go ahead right now and do the forwards pass on this. So you always start on zero day. So for A, the earliest it can finish is on the third day. And B will be on the second day. So since C is preceded, imme preceded immediately by A and B, and A finishes after B, that means that the late or the early finish of A has to become the early start of C. So that means on the third day. So then continuing the forward pass, the early finish on C will be the fourth day. And four will now be the early start for D and E, which will make the early finish seven on E and five on D. And since F is preceded, preceded immediately by both D and E, and E finishes after D. That means that the early finish on E becomes the early start on F, so the seventh day, which means that the early finish on F is the ninth day. So the early finish becomes the early start of G and H, and the early finish of G and H will be the eleventh day for H, and the tenth day for G. Just continuing this, the early finish for I and J will be the 15th for J and the 12th for I. And since K is preceded immediately by I and J, and the earliest finish for J is the 15th, that means that the early start for K will have to be the 15th which makes the early finish for K the 20th. And L and M are the last two projects, or two activities of our project. Um, and so the early start on both of those is the 20th, because that's the early finish of K. And so the earliest that our project can be completed is going to be on the 23rd, which is the early finish of M. So that means uh, that we're going to go do the backwards pass now. Um, so if you didn't see, or if you didn't understand why I put 23 up here uh, for the late finish of L, the last two activities of our project are going to be uh, activity L and M, and since M finishes on the very earliest on the 23rd, that means that L can finish on the 23rd also without delaying the project. Um, so that means that we're going to have one day of float on project L, or activity L. So the latest that K can finish without delaying the project is going to be on the 20th because if it starts after the 20th it's going to delay project or activity M which will be on the critical path and that'll slow down our project so continuing the backwards pass uh, the so 15 is the early start and the late start on K so 15 becomes the late finish on I and J So 
So just continuing the backwards pass. And here on activity F, the latest it can finish is going to be on the 9th. Because if it finishes after that, it'll delay activity H. So the late finish on F is going to be on the 9th, which means a late start will be on the 7th. And so 7 goes to the late finish for both D and E. And project C, the latest it can finish without delaying the project is on the 4th. Because if it finishes after that, it'll, it'll delay activity E. Which means that the late start, or the late finish for either of these will be on the 3rd. So, I'm going to highlight the critical path right now. So that right there is the critical path. It's easy to tell which ones are on or what activities are on the critical path because the early start and the late start are always going to be the same number, which you can see on A, C, E, F, H, J, K, and M. They're all the same numbers. So now that we have the CPM diagram made and we have the critical path laid out, I'm going to go ahead and convert this into a bar chart. I have this set up here and it has the activity, duration, resources, the early start, early finish, and the late finish, and total days of the project right here. So um, activity A will start here and it goes till the third day. And activity B starts here, goes to the third day. Activity C starts after A and B, and it goes till the fourth day. Activity D starts after C, and it goes till the seventh day. Activity E starts after C, and it also goes to the seventh day. Activity F starts after D and E, and it goes till the ninth day. And activity G starts after F, and it goes till the thirteenth day. And if you don't see where I'm getting these numbers from, they're all right here. Um, anyways, activity H will start after activity F, and it goes till the eleventh day. Activity I starts after or starts on the eleventh day and it'll go till the fifteenth day. Activity J starts here and goes till the fifteenth day. Activity H starts after I and J, and it goes till the 20th day. And then activity L and M both start after activity K, and they go till the last day of the project. So like that. Now I'll go ahead and highlight the days uh, that will represent the float of the project. So all the critical path activities will not have any float so that's why uh, project A will not have any float. Activity B will have float. You can see that the early finish is on day two and the late finish is on day three and it's a two-day duration so the first two days will be highlighted meaning 
the last day will be a day of float. Activity C is on the critical path, so it will not have any float. <clears throat> um, activity D will have one day of float. You can tell because it'll have, or sorry, it'll have two days of float. Um, <clears throat> and you can tell that because the early finish is on the 5th and the late finish is on the 7th. So that means you have two days of float there. Um, activity E, on the other hand, will not have any float. Same with activity F will not have any float. Activity G will have float. It should have three days of float and you can tell because the early finish is on the 10th, late finish is on the 13th. So that means you'll have three days of float right here. Activity H is on the critical path and it will not have any float. You can tell early finish is the same as the late finished. Um, activity I <coughs> should have three days of float right there because early finish is the 12th, late finish is the 15th. Um, activity J is on the critical path and won't have any float. Same with K, won't have any float. Activity L will have one day of float. Again, the late early finish is 22nd, late finish 23rd, which means one day of float right there. And activity M, uh, the last activity will not have any float. It's on the critical path. So I'll, head, I'll go ahead and put in uh, how many resources you need for each of these activities right now. And then we can look at the dozer demand graph down here, and that'll show us how we can resource level our project. <coughs> So there we go. Uh, we have all the resources right in here, showing us how many resources we'll need on each day that we have to be working on the project or working on each activity. So if you look down here at the dozer demand <coughs> per day, you can see that it is not level at all, really, except for this span right in here. Uh, you're gonna have two dozers and ship one out then ship one in the next day then ship another one in and ship one out for two days and just goes on and it's not very level especially in this beginning part so we're going to try and fix that right now and how I chose to resource level it on the next page is this way you can see it's definitely leveled out much better in the beginning uh, and at the end of the project, it's still pretty much the same, but in the beginning, it's a lot better. You'll have two dozers your first day, then ship one in for the next five days, then ship one in for the next five days. And uh, it's just much easier to deal with this than it is that dozer demand. You can see the difference. So that's how you construct a CPM diagram and then convert it to a bar chart and then use that to resource level your project. And there you have it.